Do you guys think we need this? We probably do. Um, well, hello, thank you for having me. Thank you for that introduction. Um, so I um, uh, thank you for having me here. I was invited here to give a, a little chat. I think we are the first uh, time we connected on, a, on another one of these events was to talk about ATC 3 that are monitoring solutions, which is what was all the rage at, at that time. So, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do a very brief company introduction here on what we do. And, and show you guys a couple of solutions that we have that may be of interest. So what I'm going to do is be very brief on the introduction and on the presentation aspect, and just jump on demos of some solutions that we have that I think would be probably more interesting for the for the crowd here. And I would really appreciate if you guys could interrupt me with any questions, any concerns, anything that comes up, because that's going to make this a lot more fun for everybody. So, uh, very briefly, to start off, uh, who we are, so that you know who you're talking about here. Uh, Teles is a Spanish company, so we've been in the industry since the 50s. Uh, we started out in, the, um, in Spain uh, when television was starting out over there as an antenna manufacturer, and we still do that uh, to this day. Uh, we're a, a corporation group these days that covers anything from broadcasting all the way to reception in the house. So we make broadcasting transmitters, we make SFM gap figures, have a lot of experience with OFDM uh, motivation all over Europe. We make test submission equipment, and then we make all uh, reception and distribution uh, solutions for MDU, commercial settings, individual houses, anything that has to do with that. Whether it's over coax, fiber, wireless, a bunch of other, all those different technologies. So some numbers in the company there, I'm not going to bore you with that. We've been in the U.S. since 1999. Uh, for the longest time in the U.S., our main line of business has been satellite, uh, mainly digital events for commercial settings for DirecTV and DISH. Uh, but more recently, uh, we've been more and more involved with, with the broadcast side of things, which funny enough is our strongest vertical everywhere else, but it hasn't been in the U.S. because really uh, the broadcast over the 90s and 2000s wasn't that prevalent in what has to do with what we make, with the reception aspect of things. And that's changing recently with core cutting and ATSC3 coming on and all of that, so we're seeing a, a lot more presence in that. Um, uh, one of the aspects that makes us quite unique in the industry, so this is one of the leaders in, in, in broadcasting solutions in, in the European markets and Southeast Asia mainly. Uh, to this day, we still design, develop, and manufacture everything in house. So we have a state of the art facility in the northwest of Spain where we make from the PCB in our broadcasting transmitters all the way to the chassis we ship the products mm -hmm. into. So we have a lot of different divisions that take care of different aspects of, of, of the technologies. So, what I'm going to be talking mainly here today. It's about our test and, uh, test and measurement division, which is called HESETEL, our transmitting division, which is called TREDES, and maybe some of you guys know the name because we've been in NAP for many, many years, and then some of the other solutions that we have for commercial settings that are interesting. Um, that's uh, as far as the company introduction. I'm going to jump, jump right into our hexing platform. We see it is one of the, of the first to hit the market ATS3 capable uh, test and measurement units. Uh, we call it a portable system analyzer. What, uh, what this platform do, it's a, the meter is about, I, I was going to bring a unit here with me, but we don't have a feed, so what I'm going to do is remote into one I have in the office with an ATS3 light feed in Denver, and then we, from there, the unit is around six pounds, it's, you know, uh, not a very big unit designed to be used in the field. The main features is a, a very big assortment of, 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 of of capabilities. So at its core, the hexagon is a 3.3 gig spe real-time spectrum analyzer, but on top of that we build a lot of TV and radio analysis functionality on it. So it has a, a big assortment of inputs and outputs and remote controlling or local controlling uh, features. Uh, it's all based on a, on a tactile display, so it's a touch screen, very easy to use, the learning curve is very, very fast. And uh, as far as inputs, outputs, and, and all of that, it has RF input. Uh, you can feed IP also to the unit, and you can feed ASI or fiber optic, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth connectivity, Ethernet, of course. And it's a very rugged platform factor designed to be used in the field. So it's dual injection, rubber and plastic, uh, field uh, replaceable battery. Uh, the battery life from a full charge exceeds eight hours. And uh, then we support all television standards. So the unit that modulates ATSC3 uh, and 1, UVT, all the UVT standards really, WAM, Annex A, D, or C. It also does IPTV, it does FM radio, HD radio, uh, it has GPS for the right testing. So it's a very compact unit, but with a lot built into it. 
So what I'm going to do, I have a presentation here with all these screens, but instead of, of boring you with that, what I'm going to do is jump on a live unit here and make a remote presentation. So uh, as I was saying, the, the unit is, uh, is fully remote capable. So what I'm doing here right now uh, is logging into a unit I have in Denver, and channel R34 in Denver is the ATC 3.0 lighthouse there. And you're going to laugh at the spectrum, but it's terrible that uh, I have this unit in my desk, but in my office connected to an indoor antenna. So it's not the best signal you're ever going to see, but it'll do for the demo purposes, okay? <laughs> so, as I was saying, the unit uh, is very easy to use. So I'm going to go over a few things. You feel free to interrupt me with any questions. Uh, what we have on the exit, on the interface, and all of this is, uh, is a touch screen when you do it in person. I'm going to do it on the computer, and it's going to reflect immediately in member, but uh, all of these you will be you would be touching the uh, the screen here. So you see these three uh, little dots here on the bottom. The unit has what we call three main modes of operation, three desktops, uh, and I'll go over them in a minute here. So the first one is what we call the system scan. So this is a single screen where once you have built out a channel plan, the unit is going to be scanning all your channels and it's going to uh, be the modulating them and uh, making a snapshot of all the measurements and you can save a lot of these at any point in time. So this is a, a screen that's uh, very useful when you're balancing an MATV system, you're installing an antenna, you're installing a head end, you're seeing how your feed is coming in, it gives you a quick scan on the top of all the measurements, it gives you a spectrum on the middle and then a table with all the measurements on the bottom. So as you can see here, I can select any channel, go to my measurements, the unit is going to identify what type of signal I have, it's going to modulate and save the measurements. Uh, in this situation, I have all ATSC1 channels in Denver, and then I have 34, which is 3.0. If this were a studio distribution or any house distribution where you have one analog, uh, terrestrial, any, any type of signals, it will find them out and it will motivate you to want each one of them and save those measurements. Uh, so, this is just a basic example. So, in all the screens in the meter, I have these uh, icons down here, so you can save a lot of that screen at any point in time. So let me, I'll do a lot of that and show you after. So, so that's, that's what this screen does. Um, you can build a channel plan on a meter at any point in time. So you go here, and this is what I have by default, let me edit just to show you. So you can do a system scan like you would, you would do on a TV, and the meter will find what channels you have. You can also manually select or unselect some of them. So that's what, this is the channel plan that the unit is going to be using from there on out. Uh, I just wanted to show you that. So that's what we call the system, uh, the system scan screen. Uh, on the mirror, all the interface and all the configuration options tie back to a user profile that you can select down here. And you can create as many as you want. And these users will contain the channel plan you're using, the quality profiles you're using on the mirror. Uh, if those signals are just terrestrial or also satellite, you could have this scan also covering satellite, you have a mean distribution. So everything ties back to that uh, user profile, and once you select it, the mirror will go back to that configuration. And all of this is synced in the cloud, I'll go over that, I'll go over that later. Um, and then the other, the other um, modes of operation in the mirror, which are more interesting, uh, are based on widgets. So we have a screen uh, that we call the main combo mode that gives you uh, four widgets on the screen. So in, um, in each of the locations in this grid, you can uh, load a number of different applications. And I'll show you some of those here. So this display where we have four widgets, we have three at top, and then we have one on the bottom. It's designed to typically have your spectrum analyzer on the bottom, because it's landscape. If you double tap on any one of these widgets, then an, uh, an extended view comes on. So just to give you an example, and every, every application in the meter is going to be different. But for instance, in your IRF measurements, if you open it up, you, know, you not only have your snapshot and the measurements you know, at that point in time, your power, MER, everything else, but also you have measurements over time. So you can use this screen uh, to lock on a carrier and see how things change over time. And you can select to record the log at any point in time. We also have what we call main logs here, which is a data logging option that allows you to save a snapshot of the measurements periodically. So you can select you know, every second, every 30 seconds, every 5 minutes. You can even mirror this screen and be saving those snapshots. Uh, something that's quite unique to this mirror for the size and form factor and price point and all that is that it also allows you to record the stream of the signal. So when you're locked into a carrier and you're the modulating, you will see this transport stream captured here 
So you can set it a capture of the stream of that carrier. So you have your channel, you want to recall your tables and all your transport stream, you can do that as well. Uh, that's another option that it has. On the RF measurement screen, we also have the transmitter ID for ATSC 3.0 that is not populated in memory right now. You have all your information for the conservation. If you have several POPs, which this MOOCs doesn't have, you will also be able to change that. So anyway, that gives you an idea on how each one of these widgets works. You know, it's up in and out, and you get to the extended view. Uh, another one is the service associate. So you have your PI there with your service occupation, and once you go in, you have uh, the call letters, the bid rates, you know, the encoding being used for each service, uh, your virtual channel numbers as well, and you can, you know, cancel your service and go to each one of them. So that's another, another feature that the mirror has. Again, you can save a lot of these at, at any point in time. Double tap out. Another one I'm going to show you is the, what we call the TV player mode. Uh, so once you require, and this is this is real time decoding. The only reason why you're seeing it tracking like that is because of the remote connection. When the meter is live, it's it's, it's just real video and audio as well. Uh, so here you can select a service in the multiplex that you want to decode. Once you go uh, to that one, you'll get audio and video of that service, and you also have an extended view with all the information. So again, you have your transfer stream ID, your service ID, virtual channel number, bid rates, the codecs all the information in a particular service, and you can also select any one of them that you want at any minute. Again, all of this I'm showing it over uh, ATAC3, obviously, because that's, that's what's of interest today, but uh, you'll have this also on QAM, on satellite, on any number of standards. Okay? In any one of these widgets, uh, you, have a, you have different options. So if you go here to this little arrow on top of the meter, you'll see bunch of other options that are there. So there's a, there's a number of functions that you can configure, and again, once the meter is configured for a particular user, uh, once you retrieve that, default, that uh, user profile, it will populate these with, uh, with the applications you have configured. Uh, probably the strongest uh, function in the meter is the spectrum analyzer. That's really what, uh, what these meters are known for. It has a real-time spectrum analyzer from, uh, from 2 meg to 3.3 gig. And it has everything you would expect from a, from a desktop spectrum analyzer. You have your, you know, you can change the configuration. Uh, if you're in front of the meter, you pinch and zoom to change your span and your reference level and all that. Uh, but you also have, you know, you can change your resolution bandwidth filter if you want. Let me do a couple of examples here. So if you want that to be faster, you can do that. Uh, and then you have also all your advanced features. You have your mean holes, max holes, triggers, all that type of good stuff. So let me turn a couple of things on here. Uh, you can put uh, up to eight markers on the spectrum. You can measure deltas between any two. Uh, you also can save the snapshots of these. And not only that saves the uh, spectrum analyzer graph, but also all the data points so you can rebuild it on the computer if you want. And something that's quite unique, and that's what, <laughs> that's, the, that's what I wanted to get to here in the spectrum, is that this meter also allows you to record the raw RF of your signal. So you can record your IQ on the signal, so you can reproduce it on a player later. And that's something that I have yet to see on a portable meter in this price point and size. So that's, that's something very remarkable, I think. So you can record uh, a raw IQ uh, file with your raw RF signal there to reproduce later as well. Uh, the meter has a uh, memory, I think it's 64 gigabytes, so you can record a bunch of this stuff. Again, if I double tap, I go out, and I go to my main screen. Uh, the third uh, desktop on the meter is kind of like the same way, but instead of having uh, four widgets, you have room for six. So it gives you the capability to add a lot more functions there. Uh, so, you know, a few things that I have loaded here, I have the advanced info screen for ATSC3. If I double tap on it, I have all my bootstrap information, my subframes, and all the information on the selected POP. This is the this is a 256 QAM here in this example. If I double tap out, I go out of that one. You have your constellation display, the same type of deal. So in each one of these, once you go in, you have an extended information view of it. And if you go out, you have a summary on the main screen. Uh, we have an echo screen, uh, especially useful when you're doing SFN uh, or the end deployments. You have an MER, MER per carrier screen as well. Uh, obviously, this is not 
uh, IP for one all, but it's available on three that all, or any OFDM signal as well. So you have uh, any number of functions. I'm not going to go over all of them. There's an SFN briefed uh, feature as well for HAC3. Uh, that you know a lot of broadcasters uh, really like when they're deploying um, SFN networks and. Uh, and uh, gap fillers basically gives you a deviation of your time base and what the, the, the retransmitter is, is seeing and that allows you to adjust for that. Uh, so that's a fairly advanced feature as well. And again, all of this, you can save logs, you can save periodic logs, and all of that ties back to a website uh, that you can access in the mirror where you retrieve all, your, all those logs after you have to. You can export all of that to spreadsheets, PDF files, uh, and, and there's, a, there's a lot of different functionality there. Uh, let me get to another unit. This one is called the way back in Spain in the lab. So the only reason I wanted to get to this one is to show you that in this case we have a, an ATSC 3 parallel multiplex but it has uh, two PLPs on it. So in, in that case you get the mirror also allows you to select uh, the PLP you want to look at. So right now I'm on the 256.1 here I think. Uh, let me go here. Uh, 6 in Quam, I just changed it. So 256 Quam, uh, that's uh, PLP1, and, but the mirror also allows you to change to PLP0 here. And then if I go in there, that's probably going to be a 16 or 16 Quam on this one. So it allows you to select the different PLPs, and obviously the constellation is going to look different. different. So there's a, you know, there, there's a lot of different functions, a lot of different options on the mirror, and a lot of different things you can do. Uh, but the idea about it is uh, to bring a tool for the broadcasters to have a portable, lightweight device that they can deploy for either rollouts or remote monitoring. A lot of people use this, they leave one in the station and they remote into it to check their spectrum, their measurements, and, and, and all of that. Um, any questions so far? That's, that's sort of, of me talking. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, another feature that's really interesting uh, in these devices is it has GPS as well. So it has a small GPS port, you can you connect a small antenna that comes with it, so you can do drive testing as well with it. Uh, and that's really uh, that's really uh, handful when you're doing also rollouts. Uh, so once it logs on the GPS, all the measurements are going to be geolocated and they will have a timestamp on it. Uh, so you can configure, I, I can't run one here obviously because I don't have the meter on the move, but you will. Um, you, uh, you will be presented with an option to make that drive testing recording based on time or uh, distance. So you can tell the meter, well, take a snapshot every five seconds or every 10 seconds as I move, or take a snapshot every, you know, 10 feet or 30 feet that I'm moving. So it will geolocate all of that. Uh, it will come up with a map. You can export a KML file that you can see over Google, uh, Google Earth, and then you can go to any one of those measurement points and see what the readings uh, you get there. And you can map that out, you can export a PDF or a spreadsheet with all the information, it's really rich in that regard. So that's, that's also fairly unique. And again, very easy to use, uh, very intuitive, all of this is going to be, you know, touching the screen and going. And, um, and that's what we call uh, the TV analyzer model. Let me go back to one thing here. Um, the meter does have a lot more functionality than that though, so just to give you an example, once you open the application wheel on the right, it has a number of things. So uh, it does provide IP analysis as well. So you have an IP feed, STLTP going into the transmitter. It will allow you to unwrap that and also analyze your traffic over IP coming in. Uh, it has the same type of stuff that I showed you so far. Let me find it here. See your somewhere, you know. And this is where I wanted to get. So that's what we call the TV analyzer mode. It has the same type of stuff for radio signals. So it also has a radio analyzer in it. It's the same type of interface, the same, the same type of features. Uh, I won't bore you with the details, but it's kind of like the same mode of operation, but for radio signals. Obviously the widgets are going to be different, and I don't have a, uh, an, FM, uh, an FM antenna connected to the meter right now, but let me see if I can get something. Well, here, let's see, we're able to get something there. So, you know, uh, same type of approach. Each one of these widgets is going to have a, uh, you know, a, a different feature on it. There's going to be always really now for radio. There's going to be different applications here that we didn't have before. Uh, once you touch there, 
uh, but it's the same type of, of, of say, philosophy. So it's a multi-media uh, view for radio signals. It supports FM radio, HD radio as well. And by the same token, yeah, the meter also has a Wi-Fi analyzer for people doing mesh networks. So it's, a, it's, a, it's like a multi-tool type of meter, uh, designed with a professional broadcaster technician in mind, but covering a lot more. So you, you have an in-house distribution where you also have cable signals and during the IP and you have a Wi-Fi network that you need to tend to. Uh, the meter will cover all those as well. Uh, so a, a number of these applications on the right are going to have the same type of look and feel as the TV analyzer had, but they're going to be tailored for different applications. So once you go into the Wi-Fi analyzer, you have a different view, obviously, you don't have a spectrum anymore. You have your, uh, your SSIDs and your, and your Wi-Fi channels. In a different in a different assortment of applications for the widgets, but the look and feel and the mode of operation is is, is consistent for all those modes. Okay. Uh, one last thing uh, that's worth mentioning, and I'll jump to a different thing in a minute here. Uh, there's um, the spectrum analyzer widget that I showed you guys. It's contained on the TV analyzer mode, but there's also where did I go? Where I wanted to go to? Yes. Ah, oh, but I'm on radio, hold on. Let me change this first. I didn't want to do that. On TV. There's an extended spectrum analyzer mode. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret here in a second, but I don't know why this is not behaving right now. Did I lose my connection or what? Oh, here we go. So we have an extended uh, spectrum analyzer mode for, for those of you really technical here, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with this, it has a waterfall display, which is also really unusual on a portable spectrum analyzer. Uh, and, and that's available not on the widget view because we need to reallocate some resources of the meter to be able to do this, but it's very unusual for a portable meter like this to have a waterfall display so you can see also how your spectrum changes over time. And you can configure a trigger here so you get, you get a snapshot if your carrier is going beyond certain boundaries. So that's a pretty powerful feature also that, that folks don't associate with this level of, 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 of test device. Um, you may see these meters under different brand names in the market. One very popular is Rodi and Schwarz. We've OEM these meters for them before. Uh, so they don't have this particular unit, uh, but you'll see meters that kind of look like hex, uh, like Hesertel uh, uh, and tele uh, Televest meters. And, under Sanfor, Rodney Schwartz, or Thompson, a number of different manufacturers, and that, that's our meter behind it. So uh, I want you guys to be aware of that. So that's, uh, you know, uh, in a nutshell and very, very fast, uh, what the hexinon is all about. So a very small meter, you know, it's more than, it's kind of like an iPad, iPad size, if I have one here. Uh, you know, six, seven pounds, I think is the total weight. It comes in a very nice package with, you know, with, with a bag and all, a ton of accessories. Uh, and, you know, in, in, a, in a very succinct, you know, the description would be multi standard meter, a professional grade spectrum analyzer, uh, covering all your TV and radio signals and much more. Uh, capabilities of uh, recording logs, transport stream, raw RF, and GPS direct testing. So that would be, you know, in, in a very, very uh, condensed summary what the tool is all about. Uh, we're seeing a lot of interest, you know, from a number of broadcasting groups deploying this, especially with, with HTC3 coming along and SFM deployments and all that. Uh, we have a lot of experience in OBM, so, so we have a lot of interesting staff to uh, uh, when it comes to that. Any, any questions? Anything? Yeah. Yeah. So does it have uh, multiple RF inputs so you could monitor uh, like or gauge satellite bandwidth in your over air broadcast? This mirror only has one, it's kind of like a field unit. So typically it's assumed that you're even looking at a broadband feed where you have satellite and terrestrial in the same feed. It does have an ASI input, so you can monitor ASI and you can monitor RF. And it also has a fiber input and an IP input. So you have those four, but RF wise it only has one at a time. So if you're, if you're doing something uh, pertaining to RF, uh, you're going to have one input. We have other solutions more advanced for that kind of application. That's typically more uh, the static uh, monitoring solution for a transmitter or a gap feeder. Uh, and I was I was going to touch base on those. I'll show you those in a minute. But for this one, it's just one tuner. And that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me let me change here. Yes, so I don't lose track of what I'm trying to tell you guys. And, uh, what's 
prize going on that tomorrow? Yeah, the, uh, the broadcaster prize for the hexagon starts at 6800. That's the base unit. The base unit. Uh, it does include a ton of stuff, so let me, let me go back to that so I don't forget anything. Uh, so the, the hardware is fully capable. There's a number of, of uh, software licenses that you can buy and upgrade, uh, but there are not a lot of them. So the, the base meter included everything that we talked about. Uh, the available upgrades are the, the uh, wait, yes, last connection, there we go. Um, the GPS drive test is an upgrade, so it's like 500 bucks. You know, you send the serial number to the office, they activate it for you. Uh, the transport stream recording and RA recording are upgrades. And those are, I think, like 400 bucks each. And then there's an option for an extended 12 month uh, warranty. And there's uh, 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 spare batteries, are another option. But pretty much everything except the GPS drive testing, the transport stream, and the RF recording capabilities are all included. So it's already ATC capable, it's already satellite, it's already plumb, all of that's included. Does it only do ATS3 or does it previous? Does it want to? It does want to. And that, that's something I didn't touch base on, and it's kind of interesting. Hold on, let me go back to that. I know it's showing small now. Something on the, on the browser here. Let me, let me do this. Uh, I didn't touch base on that, but let me select here. So other than the services, you have a you have your, your PC information. This is 3.0, so it's not PC, but you know you have your virtual channel number, your call letters, and all that. Uh, but let me go to a um, go, go to one that out here. So channel 33, this should be a 1.0. Um, here we go. Let me change something. Let me show you so that you see. Let me find you first. Here we go. Where's my tables? Here. Let me go. Different widget here, so this is going to be my tables widget. Uh, let me open it up. So it also does all your transport stream analysis. We still don't know how to call this on the three that are around because there's really not a transport stream. But once it acquires, it takes a little while here. But it'll populate all the information on the tables as well. Come on, come on, buddy. See, you have all the table information there as well. So all your PADs, all everything is is there. And you can say you can go here and save a lot of these, and this will create a very nice report with all your table information as well. And you can also create alarms to grab events on the table. So if you're missing something, it'll capture an, an event and then save a lot of that. So it's it's pretty detailed when it comes to that. Question here: um, For one, will it measure uh, jitter and? errors and such as that. Sorry, what do you say? For, for ATSC 1.0? Yes. Will it, will it measure jitter and uh, yes. uh, offsets and, and errors and errors? Yes, like yes. Yes, we have. Uh, and this is not as detailed in that regard as some other solutions are, but it does do that. Uh, let, me, let me switch to the next subject here. I'm going to fire my presentation here so that I know. So then, I don't know if anything it has. Anyway, this is what I just did, but when I don't have a meter handy. I'm not going to go into the, I could, but I, I don't think we have time. But, but the meter comes with the web server, so you can go in there, and that's where you change all the configuration, where you retrieve all your logs. Uh, extremely easy to use. There's a cloud service as well, where you have a fleet of these meters. All of them will push the information to the cloud, so all the, all the logs and all the configuration options and all the remote access is available from their cloud. So typically what you have is a senior tech that's helping guys out, and the meter, the meter gets a connection, they can go in and help them. No, you gotta go here, let me change this for you. Uh, so it's very handy in that respect. All of them have VPNs built in, so the meter, the meter gets a connection, it's gonna push all the logs and all the configuration information to the cloud. So anybody with, uh, with rights on the on the team and how we get that and help out. But I'm not gonna stop on that. So the logs are very detailed. You have all the information there. Uh, again, on the drive logs, you can save maps, you can save KML files, all of that. So it's, it's really rich in that respect. You can also change all the configuration options, channel plans, uh, create um, backups for the mirror configuration. So you can create, you, know, you can have a, a, a lead guy that configures the mirror the way everybody wants it and save that and push it through the cloud through, through the cloud through everybody else. Something you might have noticed on the mirror itself, let me go back here. 
You see that, that on all the measurements, uh, there's past fade indicators on them, the, the, the green, yellow, and red by the measurement. So all that is also configurable in the meter. Uh, that's what we call the quality, the quality check marks, past fade indicators. So here on, on, the, on the portal, that's where you change that. So you decide if your power needs to look red, uh, green, or yellow, depending on your measurement. So you have, you know, you, you have a bunch of different quality profiles that you select. So you're doing heading work, that's going to mean one thing. If you're doing outlet work or you're doing, uh, you know, uh, retransmitter work, it's going to be different. But all of that is configurable on the meter. Um, so that's the hex unit. So uh, in keeping up with that and, and, and following up on some of the questions that came out, uh, we have other uh, platforms for different, more for the for the remote monitoring uh, use case. These are typically rack mounted, and uh, we have uh, your typical transmitter and gap filling uh, monitoring solution, which is typically a, a one RU device. And we also have edge probes that uh, some customers use for uh, for receiving purposes. So they blow a bunch of them in the market to see how the signal is coming in. So basically what this does is more of a um, passive approach to monitoring. Uh, so they're all uh, designed to, uh, everything that we've seen on the XML pretty much, but a lot more detail when it comes to transport the stream and tables and MPEG and all that, all that type of monitoring. And being trapped with SNMP so you get a lot of alerts, right? So let me give you a couple of examples. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go live on the unit as well. Um, I think I need connected it before. All right, so this is a unit that we have back in the lab as well. Uh, this is RCS 400, uh, this is a one RU unit. This one has four tumors. Uh, so typical use case for this one would be uh, on a transmitting side, uh, you're a broadcaster, you're monitoring how your signal is coming out, you have four tuners, and the unit allows you to do uh, a, lot of, a lot of different things. This is what we call the, the all-in-one screen. So the unit obviously has RF measurements, transport stream analysis, has a spectrum analyzer, and it can also monitor different channels all at the same time. Uh, so in this screen you have your spectrum, you have your detailed RF measurements, all your parameter information, all your service information as well. Uh, you have snapshots of the services. Uh, the unit can also stream video back to the client, so you can right click on one of those services and stream video back. And then you have all uh, a number of alarms there that you can configure based on what you want to see. And each one of those can, can be assigned a severity and, and decide what, what the unit does when, when that event happens. You get an email, you get a text message, that type of stuff. Um, the reason for the, for the four tuners, uh, following that with that question before, typically what happens here on this unit, let me show you something here. So, um, uh, the unit has four RF inputs in this case, you have four tuners there, each one of them probably configured for something different right now. Uh, I haven't configured this unit, so I'm not sure. Uh, you have four ASI uh, inputs that you can use concurrently as well, and you have IP inputs as well. So you can, if you have an IP uh, content delivered to your transmitter, you can monitor that going in, and then you can assign the RF uh, inputs to the output to monitor your, uh, the output of your transmitter. So obviously, transport stream analysis, all the, all the information there, uh, I'll go very quickly over all the tabs here. So you have your uh, transport stream analysis over time, all the information there and all the services, uh, and then you have, you know, a bunch of, a lot of stuff down here. So you have your tree view, your gear, your service monitoring, you know, quality, uh, Q, uh, QoS, table repetition, all, all that detailed information. And again, you can configure alarms and events on, on any one of these, so you can so you monitor them in detail. RF analysis is the same way. You have RF over time there. You can configure uh, boundaries and thresholds for your measurements, so you ensure your MER is between uh, 35 and 37 or whatever, and you can configure that and receive alarms. I wanted to show you, again, also on this side, Constellation Display Echoes, all of that, SFM Drift, that's also available on the Hexilon. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, right now I have my, my RF number one selected, okay, it's logged onto a channel. If I want to enable my spectrum analyzer, it asks me if I want to disengage from that channel, because obviously I, I'm going to look at the whole spectrum right now. So if I do that, I'm going to show you guys something that's really handy. Uh, I'm very powerful also for, for the price this meter has. So you have, you have also remote spectrum analyzer. One of the things that you can do here is you can create a mask. So let me do a plus minus 2 dB mask here on the spectrum and uh, run that. Is that how I do it? 
at the end of the day, yeah. So at that point, uh, the meter is reading that that channel is within those boundaries, and you can configure an alarm so you get notified if, if it deviates from that. So once you do that, the application for the Ford Tuner version, uh, very typically what we see with our customers is they also leave, they always leave one of the tuners configured to the, the, their channel of interest all the time, 24-7, uh, you know, <laughs> every day of the year. Uh, that, that tuner that you allocate for that, you don't want to move from there because you want to make sure you're 24-7 within the boundaries. You still have three left. So you have another tuner, for instance, uh, I should have showed you this before, but there's also a polling, a polling screen, let me go there, where you can monitor a number of channels following a round robin sequence type of monitoring. So you can select on the table, same as I did on the hexagon on that system scan screen, you can select a number of channels, so you have more than one channel in that station, or those channels in the market you want to monitor, you can select a number of channels and the meter is going to be locked into, uh, over them in sequence, then acquire measurements and then saving a lot of that and also making alarms of that if you want. Uh, so on the, on the four tuner version, it's very, uh, very flexible because you, have, you can have one tuner to the spectrum, checking a mask all the time, you can have a couple tuners making measurements all the time, and you still have a tuner or two available to go into the unit and have a look at whatever you want to have a look at without interrupting any one of those processes. Uh, this unit comes in that, in that version with four tuners or with just one tuner. But they, also, they always have the ASI inputs and the IP inputs as well. So that's, that's the more uh, um, fixed, you know, 24-7 uh, type of, of test and monitoring platform uh, versus the hexagon, which is more your grab and go for the tech when they're, you know, doing work out on the field or in the lab, but it's more affordable and self-contained uh, self unit. What's very important about the, the hexagon and what makes it really different from from the few solutions that are really available today for 3.0 is that it is self-contained. You don't need anything to run it. There's a couple options out there where you have a probe and then you connect a computer to it and that probe has a tuner and then there's a software that gives you spectrum and measurements and a bunch of stuff. But it's kind of clanky and, and you always need to be tethered to a computer. Uh, the cool aspect about the hex, you know, is you charge it, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to last for eight hours. You have a swappable battery if you're out in the field and you have everything self-contained on the unit in the same screen there. Um, so that, that was, the, that was the, um, the RCS. So again, this comes in, in four tuners and one tuner versions, and the price is up to date. I think the, the one tuner version, I think, is at around $5,000, and the four tuner is around 8000 something like that. So a very reasonable uh, monitoring four solution. Four, Sorry? Four, four tuners, how much? Four tuners, I think, is 8000 yeah. And I think there's, there's a couple of options there, same as the Exynon, that are a couple of grades that are optional. Uh, but the base price is, is very fully cool, cool featured. So they're, they're very reasonable test and monitoring solutions for your uh, uh, first stations. Um, so that's the RCS. RCS. Sorry? Will RCS also uh, record transport stream? Yes, it does. And that's one of the options actually. Transport stream and uh, what's the other one? Obviously, it doesn't have GPS. We've got it with the ID and I can't get to that in a minute. Well, uh, but yeah, that's one of the options. Uh, it also has all the history of the alarms there that you can export. A lot of detail. I won't get into any of that. Uh, what I wanted to get to is this guy here, and this is super interesting, and we're just coming out with it right now. So the one you see on the bottom is what we call the G-Pro. It's, it's JP. It comes with some ears if you want to put it on a rack. But we're seeing a lot of interest on this when it comes to SFM deployments and a lower cost monitoring solution to have all your gap fillers and all your receiving sites. So basically what that is, is a skinny version of what the RCS is. Obviously it doesn't have all the features, but it gives you IP and RF monitoring on the edge for a couple thousand dollars. You don't have a spectrum, but you have all the measurements, you have all the alarms, you have all the traps, and you can configure that level of, of monitoring to make sure your RF parameters or your transport stream parameters are within the boundaries you select, right there on the edge. Um, as as a gap feeder manufacturing, we're seeing a, a, a lot of interest in this. Because people start uh, deploying as a fence and they really don't know what's happening on the edge. They don't have that visibility. And obviously, when you're putting a, a you know, a thousand watt gap feeder in a market, you really don't want to go for a full blown monitoring solution for that yeah. side. So that is kind of, this is kind of like the solution that fills in that gap. Uh, I have one right here that we can go to. I think we have one here. Yes, this is it. Let me see if it's. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, so again, it, it gives you IP uh, area monitoring. So let me go to the area, which is what I have going on. This one here is also on on my office right there. So that's uh, uh, you have uh, a real time monitoring on one channel, or you can do a volume monitoring on a number of channels. So you can have any one of those two running at the same time. Uh, if you go in it, there is a here. So so you'll see the the information is acquiring. So it's obviously measuring the channel, giving you your error measurements, uh, your services, your tables, and there's a number of different events that I won't get into that the unit reports and then you can program and assign a severity to. So obviously your signal is in log, you're gonna get an alarm, but your MER goes under a certain threshold that you program, you're gonna get an alarm. So all of that is all of that will be SNMP tracked to your MAC if you want, and all of that is logged in the unit as well. So it's a skinnier version of what an RCS does. You have one tuner in this one, uh, but still, if you have if you have transmission on the edge that you're contributing to, contributing to over IP, you can still monitor the IP and they are going out to the plant. So that's uh, that's the uh, that's what we call the pro, okay. And with that, I'm done when it comes to test and monitoring solutions for the broadcaster. You guys have any, any questions? Any others? Javier, I'm trying to come from the radio world and I'm curious about with the, uh, the uh, one rack unit installed in yes. the four tuners. Yes. If you put that at the transmitter site, typically what are the RF connections coming into that? Antennas or RF monitoring ports or can you do a combination of both? But these have BNC connectors, I think, for, for the RF. I would have to do that out though. Are they separate for the four tuners or one? Yes, they are separate. Yeah. Okay. They're separate. They're so separate. you could have a mix of antennas pointing other places and your own monitor. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm going to touch base on a solution here very shortly that I think you guys are going to find interesting. And it's really not designed for a broadcaster, but we're seeing so much interest that I'm going to mention it. Uh, on, uh, the last piece on our test and measurement portfolio is what we call the H30. And that's our. This is a very, very popular product for us in, in our OTA heavy markets all over Europe and the Middle East. In the US, it's not because you guys don't have antenna installers anymore. Uh, <laughs> but this is, this, is an, uh, this is an antenna install repeater and it's the first handheld that we're aware of in the market for ATC3.0. Uh, so it's a very powerful unit. It's a crazy good meter, if you ask me. It's, it's, like, a, it's like a cell phone. It has all your channel info information, what I just showed you, all the RF and everything else. It has a very good spectrum analyzer for the size, all the way up to one, uh, to one gig. It does the code audio and video for uh, ATC 1, 3, and 1 as well. Uh, and learns the plan, it has constellation, it has an echo display, Wi-Fi analyzer, and also supports IPTV. So it's a really, really cool little meter. It also has all the remote features that I mentioned, uh, up to its capabilities, of course but it has the same type of portal that I showed you for the Hexilon, and you can remote into it, you can remote the spectrum, you can remote your measurements, uh, and basically anything that you can do on the meter on hand, you can do remotely and see on the, on the, on the display of your remote device. Uh, funny enough, we don't sell a lot of these to, to broadcasters or to the non-existent antenna installers, <laughs> but we sell a fair amount to cable companies. And they use these guys as a poor man's spectrum analyzer for the remote uh, locations. So for hospitality, for MDU, for any commercial settings, they grab one of these little things for a thousand bucks, they put it on the rack, and they have a remote spectrum analyzer. So that's that's how cheap they are, but uh, but that's 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 what they do with it. So that's 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 our antenna installer uh, type meter. A very powerful little tool. You know, depending on the options, it can go up to, I think it's $1,600, uh, but really it's the, the only handheld ATC3 that I'll meter that you're going to find uh, today. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll, uh, we're, um, we're very present in, in OFDM and SFM, uh, so we have a division that's called Tredis, uh, that makes uh, low to medium power transmitters and gap feeders. Uh, in a number of standards we're working on, on our own ATC3 that will um, decide right now. It's going to launch, it was going to launch for NAV that got cancelled, so it's going to launch whenever NAV happens. Uh, but we're very, we're very present in that market and we have a lot of expertise on, on OFDM and SFM networks, so that's something to be mind if you guys have that need. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. I wanted to get to this because this is always uh, uh, 
uh, always has sparked some conversation in these presentations. So one solution that's also very popular in our OTA heavy markets all over Europe and other, and other places is what we call the Avant X. Uh, we call it a Helen in a box. So basically what this little box does is like half a sheet of paper big. Um, uh, it has four inputs. Uh, it allows you to connect up to four antennas to it, and it has 32 programmable filters. So you can use it to uh, to cherry pick what RF moxes you want to receive off of each antenna. Uh, it will filter everything else out. Uh, it will balance the level of all those carriers to a programmable level that you select in the unit, and it will combine them. And also, uh, that was as a launch amplifier, so it can feed an entire unit. Uh, so typical uh, case situation where you have, not only when you have more than one market, but especially, and that's something that really happens in the US a lot of times, you have a, you know, a couple of EMAs available to you. You can put a couple of antennas in the roof, and it's always a problem to combine them, because this, you know, back in the day, we used to do this with two racks worth of equipment, you know, single channel amplifiers and filtering and notches and all that. What this thing does is allows you to do that just in a, in a very compact footprint in a very small form factor. Um, it can ingest signals from minus 20 to 40 dB MB, so it's very wide, and it will adjust 60 dB worth of imbalance between, between carriers. So that, that's huge. Uh, filters 5G or LT, uh, it can power preamps if you have them. It also has a cable input. So you can combine these with a cable distribution, and I'll go, I'll go to that in a minute. And it's very easy to program uh, with, uh, with an application that it comes with. So let me, let me provide you guys with an example here. So in this case, uh, we have a couple of UHF antennas, uh, high V antenna, and then a combo. So the unit is acquiring signals from, from all those antennas. We're filtering whatever we want off of each one of those feeds, filtering everything else out, balancing it and combining it on the output. So it provides you an option to combine all of those antennas and all of those mooses in your market cleanly and being able to distribute them in a plan. And then the one last piece to the puzzle, which is what makes it even more interesting, not only does that, but it can also frequency shift those channels. So you can filter the channel coming in and remap it to a different channel going out. Uh, where you see a very interesting application in that is two cases where you want to inject your OTA in an existing plant, and we're seeing a lot of commercial operators doing that. They have a QAM system, they have a cable system, or they have whatever signals they have in the system, and they want to, they want to add their OTA. They grab those, those channels where they're coming on frequency, and they remap them to where they have locations available on their spectrum. So that's one use. The other use is when you have the same RF channel coming at you from different directions, which shouldn't happen all that often, but it does happen quite often in the US. Uh, you can receive one of those copies and you can frequency shift the other from the other market to a different frequency and still ingest, ingest both and distribute both to your, to your plan. So those are two very unique uh, use cases that make this device very, very popular. Um, it also, as I said, it has a built-in launch amplifier, so you can power an entire building. Uh, we're seeing a lot of these installed actually in broadcasting facilities to monitor your service and whatever you have around. So they put a, a couple antennas up on the roof, they select whatever channels they want to see, they, they filter them, they process them to wherever they have room, and then they have that in the plan already. Also very useful as a front end for, uh, for any number of, of headends out there. So we see a lot of people using these to heat uh, these network systems, directv systems, Comcast systems, where they want to groom their over the air channels properly before heating the distribution. So they use that, uh, that RFP and they complement their existing distribution or they take it to IP once they have a stable and, uh, and all filter left. So it, it makes a commercial OTA distribution a whole lot easier in a very compact and inexpensive package read. Uh, that's why we call it MTV Head in the Box. That's, that's basically what it is. It's a small device you put on the, on the wall, uh, you group all your OTA uh, and, and allow you to do a lot of different things with it. Um, Space that we're seeing that's opening up, and that's very interesting for you broadcasting guys, really, uh, is hospitality. So people cut in the court, but not only residential. Uh, uh, hospitality providers, hotels, hospitals, bars and restaurants, uh, clinics, and stuff like that. Uh, they're going to data, so they install a fiber to the unit system, you know, just a big data pipe. But then they want to add their locals on it. So how do they do that? 
a solution like this is, is, is a godsend for them. They just pack their RF you know, neatly and, and cleanly and they distribute it on the property. They can write it as an RF overlay on the fiber or they can keep it on the cogs, but it really allows you to take over those properties with just with OTA. Uh, we're seeing a lot of replacements, in, uh, replacements of MDU on commercial properties where they cut the contract with a provider, they put one of these things and on the same path, they just match the levels and they swap cable for OTA for the entire property. So this is really an MTV head in the box. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Two questions. Yeah. Um, so APSPN, Guam out? No. No? No, it doesn't transmodulate. It filters and it frequency shifts if you want, but it doesn't transmodulate to one. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's APSV in and out. Right. Or ATSC3. Right. Price? Uh, 399. Yeah, 399. Sound good? Uh, 300? Yes. Uh, Sounds pretty good. Uh, I think it's, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cheap, to be honest with you. And the only reason why it's so cheap, because I, I, could, I could ask a lot more for this in the US, is this is, this is a bread and butter in many, many OTA markets. It sounds very, very, very new in the US, and it is new in, in the fact that, that we frequency shift and we, and we filter digitally and all that. But these compact event solutions have existed in, in other markets for many, many years. They weren't as evolved. And that's a very competitive marketplace. Basically, every MDU all over Europe has one of these on the, on the roof. All of them. They have three antennas on the roof, they get all the markets, they condition that for the property, and when you buy an apartment or when you rent an apartment, OTA on the outlet is, is, is a service. It's, you know, it's, like, it's like having power or water. It's there. It's required. So this is very popular everywhere else. It's really new in the US because really OTA uh, has been kind of underserviced in the commercial space for a long time, let alone residential. Uh, but it's a fairly common practice in, in, in you know in, in markets that are really you know seventy percent of the viewership of, of content is over there. So it's, it's very common. But yeah, it's it's, a, it's an MBT head in anyway. So we're seeing we're seeing a lot of applications, and it's really interesting. And you know, in talking to broadcasters, we're, we're selling meters and, and you know transmitters and other things. Uh, they tell me, I didn't know this existed. Yeah, I'll put one in the studio, and you know, that way I can have all the content there very clean and very, very easily accessible or something. So that's, that's what that is. Uh, here's an example. Uh, this was actually, this is interesting, this was actually in the ATSC3 conference in Washington a few weeks ago. Uh, I was an exhibitor there, and we, we you know, we had, all the exhibitors had these, uh, these tables to show our products. And uh, they contracted an antenna installer. The guy was probably 92 years old. Uh, must have been the only one that was in the area, and they brought the guy over, you know, and, and this was a fairly big building, it was the, the Reagan uh, Tracer Center or whatever, and the guy put a small channel master passive antenna on the roof, and the conference was in the basement, so he ran a cable, and he had to provide uh, the signal to all the exhibitors, so everybody had something in ATSC3 that they wanted to demo it, whether it was a set-top box or a meter or a solution, and uh, the signal was so bad that nobody was getting the signal. Nobody was getting seen. This was the feed coming in. Obviously, you had a small passive antenna, and that's what was coming in. So I told the guy, well, get me the feed here to my desk. I'll connect it to my van. I have one of those things on the, on the, on the table, and I'll, you know, I'll fix you up. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll clean it up, I'll amplify it, and everybody will be able to get it. So what I did was exactly that. I grabbed this channel, so we started at channel 7 and 9 on, on high VHF, and then we have you know, a bunch of UHS over there. And I think the ATS is 3 on... Uh, Washington was 32 or something, it was one of those up there. So I filtered everything, I balanced everything out, I obviously amplified it, and provided a solid feed to the entire plant. Uh, so it was like, it was like, you know, we were like 40 distributors there, and then everybody, everybody was getting these from my desk, and put a, a big splitter under my desk, and then we ran cables to everybody else. So everybody, everybody was happy. So that, that's the thing, it was, uh, was a great day for us, because obviously it was a perfect use case scenario, uh, for this type of device, so, so that's, that's exactly what it does. You have your channels all and this is obviously just one antenna, but you can do this with up to four antennas. So based on four different uh, four different uh, feeds that you typically can't combine directly, because you're going to have the undesired reception from each, from each antenna. If you're getting channel 20 from here, you have an, an antenna looking at there, you're, all, you're also going to hit some channel 20 here, and when you combine them, it's going to be distracting your feeders, right? Uh, so that's, that's exactly the use case for this device. Right. Okay, and that brings me, uh, you know, from, from transmitting to test and measurement uh, to commercial distribution solutions. And what I wanted to do here, I don't know 
it really matches what the description of my talk was. But uh, what I really wanted to give you was, uh, uh, was some brush strokes and some solutions that are out there for people to, to acquire, monitor, and receive your content. Uh, we go all the way to, to antennas. So as, as I was saying when I started out, uh, my company started out in the 50s, I think it was 1952 in Spain, uh, when TV was starting out in Spain, right? And we started as an antenna manufacturer. To this day, that's, that's still a very, a very big part of what we do. Uh, so we're one of the worldwide leaders when it comes to, to OTA receiving antennas. Uh, we make our own chipsets. All of our antennas have a built-in preamplifier on. Uh, uh, it's not only a preamplifier, it's a very low noise preamplifier with our own proprietary uh, mini chipset that we make. Uh, and it has a few unique as uh, aspects to it. Uh, very wide dynamic range, uh, bigger than nobody else. Uh, it has automatic game control. So if you have speed conditions, if you have enhanced conditions, the amplifier is not gonna, it's not gonna overdrive your installation or the tuner. And it has uh, filtering. So any out of band signals are gonna be filtered in our uh, preamplifiers. So any low frequency, any FM, any out of band uh, uh, signals, and obviously 5G and LTE these days. A big problem in a lot of installations is they don't have filters, so you have a 5G tower coming nearby and then it overdrives the whole, the whole distribution. Uh, so all of that is accounted for. Um, and these preamplifiers are, are built in right at the dipole of the antenna so that we, you know, we get the best character noise possible. Um, we're working on, it's kind of out of order, but uh, we're working on an ATN TV antenna, we call it. This is not in the market yet. Uh, but one of the things we're seeing coming out with ATSC 3.0 is obviously at long last a proper digital TV standard in the US, which is very welcome. Uh, so it's going to work a whole lot better. We're not going to have all those multi-path problems we have with ABC. Uh, so we're seeing a resurgence. You know, the core cabin has been a thing for a number of years, uh, but the experience from customer has been less than satisfying because it really doesn't work that well today with the standard we have, right? Uh, we think it's really going to catch on uh, 2022, 2023. That's what all the you know all the studies indicate. So we're working on, a, uh, and I'll show you some things after. But we're working on a pretty neat concept here, which is an indoor antenna uh, with 5G capabilities uh, and, and and also optimized for for OFDM. So it's a, the idea is to have a very flexible form factor that it can be an indoor product put on a desk. It has a removable uh, reflector. You can use it if you or you can remove it if it's not needed. And it can be mounted, you know, on the wall, on a mount, indoor, on a desk, uh, in any number of different ways. So, so that's the concept we're working on. This is going to be like a 15-inch wide antenna. So it's a fairly large antenna. It's going to have a gain of 10 dBi in UHF, which is fairly substantial for that form factor. And again, it contains our all our technology, all the, you know, all the uh, smart amplification and the filter and all of that. And that is a new concept, it's not here yet, but what we're very well known for in all of our very strong OTA markets is a triple boom design antenna. So that was a television-based in invention back in the 90s, how to improve the gain of a Yagi in a small compact form factor. And that's really still what differentiates us with, with some of the competitors. So as I was mentioning before, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, repeating the same stuff, but preamplifiers with automatic game control. Independent, I didn't mention that before, but the preamps have uh, independent stages for VHF and UHF. So you have very strong UHF, it's not going to compromise what your VHF preamp is doing. So it's going to, if, if the AGC needs to kick in on the UHF, it's not going to, not going to limit the amplification of the VHF band. Very strict, uh, uh, soft filtering on out of band signals and uh, very good quality construction. So there's, there's a number of different versions, you know, we have inner products, which no matter how good an inner antenna is, and ours is, I think, the best out there. It's always a crapshoot because you don't know where they're putting it. Uh, but then we have you know different form factors, suburban kind of you know, uh, near field type of antennas, and then the more remote uh, uh, type of products, uh, which is what these are. You know we're very well known for that, and orange is the corporate color for for TVS all over the world. We're very well known for that, and you know we have options for long range, options for even for you know low low band VHF, high band VHF, UHF combos, etc. etc. Uh, that's probably still to this day, uh, from a corporate level, I would say probably 25% of our business is OTA antennas. Uh, so there's still some very strong markets out there, and we think it's really going to be coming back in the US in a significant fashion. I mean, it's not going to be the 50s where everybody's going to have an antenna, but we think it's going to really, really uh, catch on 
over the next couple of years here. So those are kind of like the four things I wanted to, to talk uh, to you guys about. You know, uh, portable test uh, measurement equipment, uh, fixed location, uh, remote monitoring solutions, uh, OTA, MATV heading above, and antennas. Kind of like those four aspects of, and that's just you know probably a ten percent of what we do as a company. Uh, as I was mentioning, you know, uh, broadcasting and, and transmitters and captures is a very big part of it. But that's kind of four things that I wanted to touch base here. See if any of that can help in your business or with your customers. Uh, we'll be happy to help.